Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you had a nice break there. I think people are still coming in and joining us. So it's kind of like being at the theater. You know, we're taking our seats. We're coming back. We're settling back in and getting ready for two of you, our stories of hope and action. Um, so we'll, we'll move forward with two of you. Um, so two is focused on the present. And besides my work for Burning Man, I'm also a yoga teacher and a meditator. So I spend a lot of time practicing being in the present moment. Um, but seeing what these artists are doing really is such an inspiration for me. They're really like living and breathing that, that, that being in the moment. So two of you, present moment. Um, things in the world are really different than they've been. So our, we've got some artists who have done work in Black Rock City before who have really um, responded to what's going on in the world right now. And they're creating really interesting things that uh, most of them are things that you can personally be involved with and participate in. So first, we're going to start off with um, a group called Building 180. So if we want to take it over to them. Hey, all. How are you? Can Good. you hear us? <laughs> yep, we got you guys. Go for it. Awesome. <laughs> Do yeah, we're uh, currently en route to Las Vegas, so we appreciate you sharing our slides. Uh, we are en route to do a couple of cool art installations there as things are starting to open up. So you caught us on the road. And this is Meredith Winner. I'm Meredith. <laughs> I'm Shannon Riley. We're both co-founders of Building 180. We are an art production and curation agency. We are makers, creators, and builders. If you can jump to the next slide. Um, you can see that a lot of the work that we do was inspired by Burning Man and Burning Man artists. Um, there we go. Um, we actually, Meredith and I met at a hangar on Treasure Island that was called Building 180. We were volunteering under amazing Burning Man artists such as Peter Hudson, you can see on this page, and Marco Cochran, who you'll hear from later today. And I think you're going to get a studio tour and some exciting updates from him. Um, and Meredith and I met there and we were incredibly inspired by all of the art that was happening. And we wanted to get art not just at the playa, but we wanted to bring it into the public. And so we started a company around doing that. So you can see here, we work with tons of Burning Man artists, um, including Christopher Sharp, Rainbow Bridge, and we bring a lot of those um, pieces to the public. And we also do other art curation and other interiors and public artwork. Um, and we were brought on today to talk about an initiative that we created in response to the current situation. It's called Paint the Void. Um, and in saying that, Meredith's gonna talk you through what Paint the Void is. However, I did wanna talk about, or just say one quote that I recently heard um, that's by Brene Brown. And it says, unused creativity is not benign. It, is, it metastasizes. It turns to great rage, judgment, sorrow, and shame. And I think that in today's time, especially after everything that's happened um, in our neighborhoods, in Oakland and San Francisco, to those Bay Area burners, um, we're seeing a lot of a response right now. And there's so much built up energy and frustration. And I think what we're doing, and I hope what we can do as a collective community, is take that energy and tap into our creativity and our artists and create change in a more positive way than what we're seeing right now. Um, and I'm so sorry to anyone out there that is experiencing, I mean, everyone is experiencing a hard time. Um, and what we've really created with Paint the Void is hopefully creating a positive and uplifting spin to that. And so Meredith's here to talk to you guys about that. And she's like, <laughs> and you guys can feel free to kind of flip through the slides for us as you go. Um, yeah, Paint the Void was started. We saw an incredible amount of boarded up businesses in the Bay Area and as a result wanted to do something. We know that artists really in the face of adversity and when there's hardships uh, kind of use art as a tool to communicate what's going on around them. And they do this, the messages are especially amplified when Hit, when things are really hard and the arts tends to get hit pretty hard when the economics uh, when there's economic downturn and when people you know have when there's a lot of like political strife or financial hardships uh artists really react in a way and this was no different that artists were kind of drawn to continue to create and throughout san francisco we started to connect businesses with um artists in our local communities within their neighborhoods to paint uplifting imagery onto boards around storefronts in the Bay Area. Uh, we are 
partnered with a couple of great people, Inga, who runs Art for Civil Discourse, which is a nonprofit, and our documentary uh, director, Lisa Bortman, who has been capturing all of the magic as artists transform our city. Uh, we started this initiative with a fundraiser on Facebook, which in the first 10, I think it was the first 55 hours, we raised $10,000. Uh, to date, we've raised about 50 or, or over fifty over fifty thousand dollars to uh, give stipends to artists and uh, provide provide for some some time for their material or excuse me funds for their materials and also for their time. Uh, we've partnered with over fifty eight businesses. We have uh, fifty six uh, fifty six artists, and we have been working with neighborhood associations and. Uh, business improvement districts throughout the city. So this has been a really amazing, totally community effort. Uh, I think one of the most astounding things with the funders are is that there's been over 500 individual donations. And these are people that are within our communities who really care about our city, who really care about artists. And it's just amazing to watch that support grow and, and how much outpouring of support that we've, you know, experienced by working with really working within our communities and it's it's also just this amazing opportunity that out of such devastation that we can bring public art to our city which has generally been pretty difficult to do especially in, in the San Francisco Bay Area um, as you are probably aware there's a lot of bureaucracy and red tape to getting public art there out there but this has been an opportunity for us to just really go for it and there's blank canvases everywhere and artists kind of have it in their blood to continue to create and we have it in our blood to facilitate that creation so we are really thrilled to be able to give back to our city in a way that we haven't necessarily been able really to do before because it's been a, it's been really a challenge so also four over 450 artists signed up to paint which is incredible to know that there's such a thriving um, mural scene in San Francisco, even though, you know, we think about artists getting edged out and having connections with this, you know, amazing new vast pool of artists working in our home is pretty incredible. So we're extremely grateful and we know we're not happy with what's happening, of course, because it's been really difficult, but it's amazing to see like what we can transform uh, this project into bringing positivity to everyone. And yeah, we'd really love you guys to see all the murals in town and you want to talk about our ask? Yeah, well, we have um, our website, Meredith and I's website and Building 180 is building180.com. Um, we've created a website called paintthevoid.org in collaboration with our nonprofit partner. Um, so if you want to go to paintthevoid.org slash murals, you can see this incredible map right here of all of the murals we've put up. It's getting updated daily. We have artists continuously going out and we hope that they continue to go out. We know that unfortunately a lot of boards will continue to stay up. Um, and we're also trying to partner more strategically to do a lot of revitalization efforts around the city. So we really wanna take the opportunity now to um, ask people if they can to come to our website to donate. We need funds to pay all the artists. Um, Meredith and I and our team have been doing this pro bono and we want to continue to pay artists that are in need and we'd love for any other ideas especially around the current events um, and ways to help and really get into businesses and get into community members who need help a lot of people are struggling right now so to ask to paint and donate a mural to their studio or to their storefront has been difficult so if you know anyone in need please message us on instagram or um, feel free to email us and contact us and yeah, we would have, I see your comments at the bottom of the screen and we are definitely planning to do more murals in, in Oakland. That's our goal. We we're talking to a lot of new community members there and yeah, it's really important three, to us as well. Three in Oakland and three in Berkeley and are pushing efforts there now. Thank you guys. Thanks, so. You're inspiring. <laughs> How are we doing, everybody? Can we hear me? Yay, we got you, Joe. Thanks. All right. Well, yay for phones. Um, welcome to the present. Anything can happen. It's COVID time. Look at us um, responding on the fly and doing cool stuff. Um, so happy to be here and um, really excited to be talking about these artists who are um, 
you know, jumping right into the present and being here responsive and innovative. Um, I'm going to skip my little cute spiel that I started um, writing earlier today and just get into the next artist. We'll um, see how much time we have at the end and see if we can be cute a little longer. Um, coming up is Zoe Fry from Mill Valley. She's going to talk about parts of gratitude. Zoe, I'm going to kick it to you. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm really, really grateful. <clears throat> so the Hearts of Gratitude, um, our project, began um, in response. Somebody sent out an email to a group of artists in Petaluma at the Petaluma Art Center and uh, said, you know, what can we do for the community? Like, can we get some kind of, like, inspiring something out on the street? And and the next morning I woke up to my garbage collection and I, and it, this was like two days after the mandate hit in California. And I was like, Oh, thank goodness. Like, I'm so grateful that that person is willing to do that job. Like you see immediately how quickly the system can like fragment and fall apart without essential workers. So our initiative ended up joining kind of this, national at least um kind of heart imagery campaign and i've thought a lot about that like right after that i was like i'm not so attached to the heart like what's the heart about here and and i feel like it really has to do with the difference between um swallowing the propaganda of fear uh, and scarcity and not enough and it's falling apart or um following your heart tons of coaching conversations about that like lots of how do we take the opportunity here to connect build community um bring art out on the street and into public places like what shannon meredith were talking about so that people can see that they're not alone like so that when they're off at work they're not alone we have a Facebook group that's kind of a maker space. So people start sharing the hearts that they made. There's hundreds of images from there. Uh, very sweet. And a little thing that's come from that is people are making small heart art, which you can send to me. That's going to go inside my installation from last year, which is this gigantic egg called the ovule, which is up at the Petaluma Art Center at the Smart Train Station. And so we're going to have this collection. It's like a container. We're going to have a collection inside of there of um, beautiful hard art. I can't ignore the fact that my sense was that things were going to get harder before they got better. And I still think we're in that passage. Um, I can't ignore the fact that I'm really aware of my privilege and I can't ignore the fact that I, I felt drawn to call out to artists that it was time for us to bring messages of hope and inspiration during this time of darkness. Um, and the next pivot is we get to serve, I believe, um, from our place of privilege, we get to serve marginalized communities um, and actually really walk our talk. So I would love you all to join me in that. We're about to get a slide up here um, that is going in next week for the, um, the uh, Code Tenderloin. And they're a nonprofit that is right in the heart of uh, the Tenderloin in San Francisco. And they just got a testing site and they are very excited to have a group of artists come and um, help them with their messaging and their support. And I think I, my big invite for you is to donate to them if you're feeling a little bit powerless this week and join me. Like I look forward to creating a Zoom call where we can just get on and talk about what we're gonna do. Um, how we're going to respond, how we're going to get messages out there that, that serve direction change. So thank you all. Okay, I say bye now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Zoe. That was Thanks. beautiful.
We love the work you're doing, and we can't wait to see what continues with this project. Um, okay, we're feeling a little more settled. I'm going to rewind from the present for a moment uh, and talk about uh, timekeeping. So we've got a few more artists left. Everybody has five minutes. We're doing our best to give a little bit of window for some questions if possible. Um, so if anybody gets close to going over, we have a fabulous method that's friendly and fun. It's called Kai. She has a whistle. Let's see what that looks like and sounds like. Kai, what do you got? <laughs> All right. All aboard the multi-universal train. Yeah. We are leaving the station. All right, quit taking these artists' time. We're going to get back to it. Um, our next artist is Patrick Stern. He's calling from Los Angeles, and he's going to talk about changes in the air. Patrick, take it away. Hey there. Uh, I hope this is working. Looks like it is. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, my name is um, Patrick Shurn. I'm an artist in Los Angeles. Uh, I want to make sure this video works. Hold on. Sorry, give me one second to make sure that... Okay, we're going to go for it. So uh, I've been working in Los Angeles. Uh, I have a studio, Poetic Kinetics, and we, um, we generate large-scale kinetic artwork worldwide. Uh, this is an example of uh, some of the pieces that I've taken to Burning Man in the past. This is a, a art car um, series, uh, Hope Flower and uh, Fear Flytrap, uh, kinetic artwork that actually propelled my company forward. When somebody saw that, they wanted me to direct and, uh, a video, excuse me, direct a, a puppet show in, in Beijing 2008 Olympics. Uh, this is the, some, piece, some fire ceiling pieces. Uh, I hope you guys had a chance to see them, maybe snuggle up under the warmth. Um, but what I wanna talk about today is this series here, this is the Skynet series. This is the first one went into Los Angeles, uh, Pershing Square, and it was a guerrilla installation. We put it in in one night, we installed it at, at sunset. It was there in the morning when, when all these people in all these office towers came to work. And uh, it generated a huge amount of response. Um, I wasn't ready for it. The city wasn't ready for it. And it has uh, um, really, really made this series exciting. I've now um, been able to take these pieces and install them worldwide. This is just a quick example. And I'm, I'm setting this up as context for the project that I'm doing now that I have all this passion for, which is uh, called Change in the Air. And uh, this is an opportunity for everyone to participate. We're taking um, messages digitally, um, asking you to fill in the blank, fill in the finish the sentence, what if we had, and the sentence, when this is over, uh, if it's on social media, tag Poetic Kinetics, you can go to the website, when this is over.org. Uh, and this was inspired by a piece that we did last November in um, Berlin over the Brandenburg Gates celebrating the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. So this was a response to how we feel about walls coming down, how we feel about walls going up. And uh, we collected 40,000 individual handwritten messages, uh, predominantly in, in Germany, but worldwide. And it was really transformative as an artist to be able to um, collaborate and intimately interact with people uh, who had these memories, who had these hopes for the future, um, to see their tears, to see their joy. Uh, it was really, really amazing. And so um, I'm really inspired now to, to collect messages um, from people in isolation now, responding to uh, everything that's happening today. Initially, this was a COVID-19 um, effort, um, but obviously in, in recent days, uh, there's a lot more to talk about and, uh, and express ourselves with. So this is just some examples of some of the messages we've received. But what we're really trying to create here is a, a poignant time capsule capturing this time. We want to document this, this experience uh, and everyone's thoughts, not just myself. Um, 
I feel it's through this work, what, what I've seen in these messages reflect is we are all the same inside and that the fear and the otherness and the division that we are presented with is all a fabrication. It's all bullshit. And that the harsh reality is that if we were all able to just communicate directly without having to go through algorithms and filters, uh, that we would be able to um, inspire change and do, do the things that we need to do to make this planet livable and to make peace actually happen. Uh, so we're taking these messages um, and collecting them. On the website, there's also an opportunity to send your messages uh, to your elected uh, official in Congress. And so through that, they can actually see what was collected here. They get to see um, our anger, our frustrations, what we want in the future, um, what we wish we had, uh, and, and express themselves. And so we are going to be displaying this piece in DC and then wherever else we can, uh, as soon as it's safe. Um, I hope to collect 120,000 messages or more, um, which ends up being like 20,000 square feet of surface um, floating in the air. And I wanna celebrate with all of us underneath this piece uh, when we install it. And it's gonna take all of us, all of our voices together to make it that powerful and dramatic uh, and, and to actually really take this, you know, this someplace. So uh, this is the website, when this is over.org answering the, the sentences, what if we had, or when this is over, or both. Um, this is a digital campaign now. We are handwriting these messages by hand. Uh, and I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to hear, to share it um, with everyone here. And I ask that everyone share it el elsewhere so that we can really uh, be represented in these chaotic, turbulent times. And thank you very much, everyone there, for this opportunity uh, to to participate in this in this webinar in this project uh it's something we really feel passionate about um from our from our spots in isolation so thank you very much appreciate it thanks so much patrick i can't wait to celebrate with you when the time's right under this beautiful work it really thank is you. really yeah. special thank you very much Peace. okay we're going to keep things moving and get to <clears throat> our next speaker, uh, speakers actually. This is Christina Sparong and Christian Risto. They're coming from Taos, New Mexico, and they're going to talk about capsule. There we go. Okay. Can you hear us? There. Can you hear us? Yeah. Can you guys hear us? Yes, yes, we can. Oh, fantastic. Hi. Um, we are Christian Risto and Christina Sparong, and uh, we have been building big art uh, for a long time uh, separately, even though we're a couple. Uh, and uh, what's exciting about this project, or one of the things that's exciting about the project that we're going to talk to you about today is that for the first time ever, we're collaborating. We're working together. And uh, we will be collaborating on a new sculpture called Capsule. Uh, we are co-creating Capsule for a local arts and culture initiative here in Northern New Mexico called Seiko Live uh, in conjunction with um, Taos's very own outdoor art festival, which is called the Paseo Project. Uh, <clears throat> When we began the conversation about this piece, we agreed that we wanted to build something that would uh, engage uh, the community and respond in, a, in an interactive way to um, the feelings and thoughts uh, that, that we're all going through together in this unprecedented time. Yeah, and then Christian and I were thinking about uh, this transformation taking place right now um, and the silver lining and the many ways that this experience could change our collective behavior, basically. Um, so the interactive component of the sculpture that, we're, that we are building now um, invites the community to place notes uh, within the sculpture, acting like a time capsule uh, for this moment. 
again, similar to Patrick's idea, um, there is something poignant about creating a time capsule about this unusual moment in time, really. Um, and we'll be using uh, we'll be using social media as well to document the notes and to to create um, a log of all the messages on the notes, so that um, after the notes disappear, they live on. Um, and in, then in addition to the interactive layer, we also wanted a piece that through some elemental catharsis would change its form. Um, so capsule will contain firewood, which acts as a ballast and um, the weight of which will keep the sculpture uh, in its initial position. And once it's set alight and burned, uh, the change of weight will cause the sculpture to transform and open itself kinetically, mechanically. Um, and once it's open, it will expose a full globe with these glass uh, tines that, that are protruding upwards, uh, representing the rising of a new way of seeing, a new way of being, um, just rising, like something new coming out. Um, and with that, I will um, share my screen. Or yes, yes. So <laughs> capsules, capsules going to harness the transformative power of fire to burn these notes. Um, and uh, using that as fuel, it's going to kinetically open itself and then also kind of send these notes, uh, these hopes and dreams and frustrations and visions of the future up into the ether. So let me share the screen here real quick. Uh, go here, share, and present. Okay. So this is the logo and the two um, social media sites. Facebook will be Capsule Taos and on Instagram, Capsule Taos. And hopefully the notes uh, will start uh, being recorded there. Um, oh, sorry. There. Nope. No. One more. It doesn't want to. There. Uh, so this is <laughs> this is uh, one of our working drawings, uh, kind of giving you guys a first glimpse of what the piece actually looks like. Um, here we're working out some uh, elements, some issues of scale, and how the piece, how the different components of the sculpture relate to each other, as well as how the sculpture as a whole uh, relates in terms of scale to the the participants or the people who will be invited to interact with it. And oops. And then here's a depiction of the hand like pedals that actually open uh, as the ballast changes um, and another depiction of that as as the sculpture changes. Um, so um, and then we have this little <laughs> and here here's a, a, a working model relatively rough model but uh, this is what we were using to uh, work out this the kinetics, and so when the fire happens, we've got this opening, and we were really working on trying to uh, find a way that felt organic and interesting for it to open. And so that's that'll happen on the on the big night when we decide to burn. Thank you. <laughs> I hear a whistle. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. That was, that was great, you guys. Thank you. And you know, it's a pretty cute little whistle. No harm done, right? Um, all right, we're almost done. We're almost out of here, folks. We're going to talk to our last group of artists. Um, this is coming to you from California and Reno, um, talking about the Black Rock Forest Project, Greg Adams and Peter Hazel. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. This is Greg Adams from uh, San Carlos, and there's Peter. Yes. Um, can you, can you oh. hear me? Um, let me share our screen for you. I love technology. And we'll start. There we go. Uh, I, I have to say, I, I first um, met Peter in 2017. Uh, he had just brought a beautiful sculpture called Bloom, uh, the jellyfish that you could walk into and look through these beautiful pieces of glass. 
uh, and I was working with the Flaming Lotus Girls bringing a piece called Noetica. Uh, and we struck up a friendship and I met him on 2018 when he was, he brought Bloom back and put it on Playa and was uh, tarting her up with uh, some, some LEDs. And uh, we got into a conversation and I said, what are you gonna do next year? And he told me about this beautiful idea of, of putting together a forest, of encouraging other artists to build a, a tree, their tree, a tree of their own design, and creating all of these different uh, types of trees and putting them together. And 2019 came and uh, things moved on and we sort of forgot the project uh, until the Black Rock City uh, uh, build was canceled in 2020. And that's when I called Pete and said, is it time to build the forest? And, and he said, yes. Pete? So anyway, you can hear me, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so we forgot about the idea about the, the forest and Greg reached out to me and during this virus, um, everything kind of went flat and I noticed there's a lot of finger pointing and the press and all the negative uh, problems and everyone's stuck at home. And I thought what a great, great timing to uh, create a massive forest from artists all around the world, all my friends from everywhere. And we can all collaborate and make a forest. And if you make one tree, that's cool. But imagine we get artists from around the world to each artist make their own tree, any way, any shape, any form, and bring it to the desert and just make a massive forest out of all these different crazy artistic trees. And then the idea started to fly. And I would say I reached out to maybe uh, uh, my friends and artist friends, and we're like 95% yes, everyone wants to do it. We got the Russians coming, we got uh, Clay from Australia coming. As a matter of fact, I'm really proud of a friend of mine, Jerry James, the guy who built the first man, is actually going to do a wooden tree, but we're not going to burn it. And uh, so we're looking for as many artists as we can. We'd love to get a forest about 200, 200 trees or so. We also have a location afterwards here in Reno that uh, there will be for sale. So you can build your tree, be part of a collective forest, and uh, even possibly sell it. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be amazing. And, uh, and this Corona thing, it's like, wow, I, I kind of got excited about it. Even the snake I'm doing, we kind of put that on the back burner, but this tree thing is really exciting, especially all the folks that are coming aboard and we are looking for everyone. I'm, I'm even going to get my grandkids to build a tree. We, it doesn't matter what size, how big it is. Uh, you can make a bush or a bench or anything. It's a massive collaborative. Great. So, so why a forest? Um, we'd like to introduce the Black Rock Forest Project. Uh, we feel it's an apt metaphor for uh, a greater art community and for the community at large. Uh, each individual tree and, and bush and vine and, and creature will contribute to the whole. Uh, each year, there's renewal, there's growth, uh, there's symbiosis and interdependency, nurturing and communication. No tr two trees are the same. And each is important to sustaining the, the biome, the ecosystem. Uh, so we're proposing a project of two parts, designed to encourage creativity and community, an art development that uh, is going to be sustaining us in this challenging time. Uh, for 2020, we're proposing uh, to put together a, a web page. Uh, we've invited artists from across the globe. We now have five countries and over 39 artists. Um, we would, would like to have many, many more. Uh, each artist will submit the image of their tree uh, and, and it will be a, uh, a web page where you can see the process. It will change every week. We'll show the progress. And then in 2021, bring your tree to Black Rock City walk through the forest, sit down on benches, make the, the, uh, the community whole again. 
So we have already brought in people that you already know and have seen. We really want to be inclusive and international. We want people who have never brought art before because we want to show it off on our webpage. We want to bring it to Black Rock City. So we encourage you all to make a tree. Get in touch with us. Give us a, a day or two to get our, our uh, webpage completely functional. Um, but send me an email at blackrockforest2021 at gmail.com and we'll get you started on the process. We want you all to be part of this forest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I can't wait to see what people contribute to the forest and I can't wait to wander through it in Black Rock City. Okay, we're going to wrap up quick. Um, I do want to say that there were many other artists doing amazing work and we're going to try to find other ways to highlight them outside of this forum. Um, and in the meantime, chat with your friends in the, uh, oh, maybe Katie's going to tell you a little bit more about what's coming up in the future. I'm ready for it. We'll see you there. <laughs>